12. The night beat starts right now. A bullet through a wall hits a 20 year old man, killing him and leaving his family stunned. Although the medical examiner's office has not yet identified him officially, his family says he is Isaiah Guevara. His aunt wants answers about how the seemingly accidental shooting happened. The night team Zaria Oates shares how his family is remembering him. He's, he's just a family guy. This is Isaiah Guevara's aunt and uncle, Christina and Roger. And he's there for whoever needs him. Guevara's uncle says Isaiah was just 20 years old when he was shot and killed early Saturday morning on the northwest side. A neighbor says this kind of incident is a first for the neighborhood. I've never seen any problems here. So, so I, I'm shocked to hear it. San Antonio police says they got a call of shots being fired around 4 a.m. The caller told police they heard gunshots and that several rounds went through their apartment walls. According to SAPD, no one else was injured, but the department has no suspects so far. Amid little information, Isaiah's family is hopeful someone will come forward with details leading to an arrest. We're not at peace right now because we don't know exactly what happened. But if, if, if y'all can just step up and use your voices, if you saw anything, if you heard anything, please call SAPD. Zaria Oates, KSAT 12 News. Another shooting we're covering involved three teenagers last night. Police say a 15 year old boy had to be rushed to the hospital Friday night after an accidental shooting at a home on Dartmoor Street near 410 and Highway 90 on the west side. Two other teens, a 15 year old girl and 14 year old boy were in that home. Police believe one of them brought the gun into the home before it was accidentally discharged. At last check, that teen is in critical condition and police say charges could be considered. And in Comal County, two teens are facing several charges, each accused in shootings on back to back days this week. This is Mason Alexander. He and an unidentified 14 year old were arrested Thursday. The sheriff says one of the shootings was a drive by in Spring Branch that sent a man to the hospital. Both are charged with aggravated assault, discharging a firearm from a vehicle, as well as three counts each of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Well, Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez has instructed his office to hold this man accountable after he was arrested and charged with assaulting a poll worker earlier this week. 63 year old Jesse Lutzenberger has been charged with injury to the elderly after investigators say he punched a poll worker who asked him to remove a hat that he was wearing. Lutzenberger was wearing a Make America Great Again hat at the polling location. Texas law prohibits voters from wearing clothes or accessories that support specific parties or candidates within 100 feet of a polling location. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says Lutzenberger initially complied when he was asked to remove his hat, but was spotted wearing it again as he left the polling place. When the worker asked him to remove it again, that's when deputies say he punched the man several times. Lutzenberger left and was arrested hours later at his home. He has since bonded out of jail. And D.A. Joe Gonzalez says his office will, quote, vigorously prosecute Lutzenberger in court. In a statement, Gonzalez added part, quote, no one has the right to assault, threaten, harass or intimidate an election employee or voter. Please rest assured that if anyone in our community engages in this conduct at a polling site, the Bear County District Attorney's Office under my leadership will hold those individuals accountable, end quote. If you're planning on voting early ahead of the November 5th election, here's some important info that you'll need to know before you head to the polls. Bear County registered voters can cast ballots at any polling place in the county. The hours vary by day and tomorrow polling places will be open. That's from noon until six. The last day to early vote is this upcoming Friday, November 1st. After that, the next opportunity you'll have to vote will be election day, which is November 5th. And KSAT's Vote 2024 webpage is updated daily with new election stories. You can also find important voting resources like sample ballots and polling locations and so much more. To so stay in the loop, just scan the QR code right there on your screen. Night one of Muertos Fest saw thousands converge on Hemisphere Park downtown. More than 80 altars scattered all over Hemisphere for families, loved ones and strangers to pay their respects to friends, family members, even pets who have passed away. 
If you missed tonight's festivities, don't worry, you still have tomorrow. And if you can't go, we have you covered. We'll air a special broadcast of the event next Wednesday on all of our KSAT platforms. It was toasty today to be out there. It was. Courtney and I were catching all of our co-workers who were coming in from <laughs> where Toast Fest <laughs> just over the past 30 minutes. Sweaty. That's exactly <laughs> what they, they were saying. It was toasty out there, especially for late October standards. We had plenty of sunshine this afternoon after we found some morning cloud cover, which helped high temperatures climb into the upper 80s and low 90s in and around the San Antonio area. Take a look at your Sunday forecast. More more of the same is in store. Morning cloud cover building back in. We're going to start off in the upper 60s, right around 70 degrees. If you're stepping out for any Sunday morning activities, that morning cloud cover will start to scatter up, break up a little bit more into the afternoon. Once again, helping those high temperatures climb to near 90 degrees. So that is going to be the big story into the back half of the weekend. Next week will start warm and dry, but then we see a few changes work back into the forecast, specifically when it comes to a few spotty rain chances that return by Halloween. Not looking to be a washout by any means, but again, a few light showers will be a possibility next Thursday and into Friday. We'll time it out and get you those details coming up a little bit later on court. All right, thanks, Mia. Time now to talk cookies, not the yummy kind, the techie kind. You know those notifications that you get from websites asking you to accept all or manage your cookies? We all make a choice or just X out of that, but what are we agreeing to when we do? We don't see them, we don't actually touch them, and we're always being prompted, do you want to accept cookies? Coming up in a new case that explains what are cookies, how are they used, and what should you know about answering that prompt the next time it pops up online. Case that explains is coming up in about 20 minutes. Hurting a group of hurting a group that helps kids, how a New Braunfels nonprofit is managing to accomplish their mission despite a major setback. That story next on the night. Hurting a group that helps abuse children, tools, equipment, and furniture stolen from a New Braunfels nonprofit that helps young survivors of violence. The founder says the items add up to tens of thousands of dollars. She spoke to our Devin Carp about how they're still moving forward, though, with their mission. These were covered. We had decor and we had blankets all over here for children's rooms. Um, and then we have furniture. I believe a box spring and mattress was stolen because that was right here. Um, and then we had some, some nice furniture here that we had purchased for upcoming room transformations that are gone. Susie Viverall says she founded Room Redux five years ago with the mission of helping abused children change their lives by changing their rooms. We have to make sure that we're protecting children for their lives now. Children should have fun, happy, childhoods and so many of them don't one in four girls one in six boys are sexually abused before the age of 18 and that's just what's reported the nonprofit gives makeovers to their bedrooms complete with new furniture televisions a coat of paint toys and more storing everything that they need here in their warehouse wednesday morning went for a run and i saw a whole slew of items across the ground here and it was obvious that somebody had been in the dumpster dumpster diving Viverall says she had called the Comal County Sheriff out, made sure that the motion sensing lights were working, locked up, and went to bed that night. The next day, we came out here and realized that tools were missing, wire was missing, furniture for children that goes into their room transformations was missing. Um, oh my gosh, a, a ton of stuff. The nonprofit has insurance, but still doesn't know what will be covered because Viberall says she keeps finding items that are missing. In total, worth tens of thousands of dollars. Do you think they knew that they were stealing from someone that helps kids? When we take a look in there, we'll see. We'll see what you think. I mean, there's there's drawers or uh, shelves full of books. Yeah. Children's books and children's furniture and things for children. Now they've added more security cameras, locks, and is still pushing forward, using what the nonprofit has to still try and help make a difference where they can. It's heartbreaking, it's sickening, uh, but it's not going to stop us. That's the thing. We have two room transformations today, and everyone said, are you going to still have them? And I said, absolutely, we're still going to transform those little girls' lives. 
Devin Corp, KSAT 12 News. That means don't go anywhere alone. Always have a buddy there with you, right? But then, two for parents, just keep a close eye on them because you never know uh, in the blink of an eye they can kind of wander off and be missing. Well, it might sound simple, but we always want to remind parents to stay safe on Halloween. Rico Lane with Endeavors gave Case out a breakdown of some Halloween safety tips. Keeping up with your kids on the trick or treat route, stay right with them. Use the buddy system and make sure to check their candy. Three simple ways to ensure a happy Halloween for everyone involved. Another thing that could make Halloween happy would be some good weather, maybe? Some good weather. Not as toasty. Exactly, yeah. and I don't think it will be right. by next Thursday. We're gonna start to see a little bit more cloud cover work back in, and while it's not gonna be a washout, that's right. important, we do have about a 30% chance for a few spotty showers in the forecast. That is all gonna be dependent on a frontal boundary, how far south it's able to make it in Texas, so something to check back in on in the days We're ahead. In such a bad drought. I mean, I feel like people wouldn't even be bummed about Probably it. Probably. <laughs> Not. Halloween or not, we need the rain that bad. Yes, we surely yeah. do. So let's get you a look at those Halloween sneak peek weather headlines here. Again, we've got about a 30% chance in the forecast right now by next Thursday and even into Friday for a few light showers will be a possibility. May need to dodge some of that activity here and there, but it's going to be warm. Nothing like what we saw last year where our high temperature on Halloween was 61 degrees here in San Antonio. No jackets are needed this year on Halloween right now. Now we've got a forecast high in the mid 80s and by trick or treat time around sunset upper 70s near 80 degrees. That's what we are expecting in the San Antonio area. So let's go ahead and time it out. Here's a look at the big picture right now. We actually have a stalled front across North Texas. We of course didn't feel any effects from that. Unfortunately, that's going to lift up to the north here over the next couple of days as this high pressure system that's currently positioned off to our west starts to make its way closer to the state of Texas. It's close to the Lone Star State by tomorrow and into Monday. Then that starts to work eastward and leaves just enough room for an area of low pressure to push across the northern tier and into the Great Lakes region. That is going to drop a cold front into the state of Texas. The big question here again, how far south is it able to travel before it hits the brakes? Right now, with what we've seen in today's forecast data, it suggests that the front actually could could make its way a little bit farther off to the south than previously anticipated. So that's why we've slightly upped those chances for rain by next Thursday and into Friday. Still dry and unseasonably warm tomorrow, Monday and even Tuesday as well. By Wednesday, we'll introduce a 20% chance for an isolated shower back into the forecast and again, bumping that up slightly into Halloween and next Friday too. So we'll of course continue to keep you posted if there are any major changes when it comes to that trick or treat forecast, we'll be sure to let you know. In the meantime, let's talk about today. 71 degrees was our official low temperature. That was well above average for this time of year. Another warmer than average afternoon as well. We hit 90 degrees officially in San Antonio. That is 11 degrees above the average high of 79 and only one degree shy of the record, which is 91 for the day. Right now, mostly clear skies in place here in town. Temperature right around 80 degrees in San Antonio. As we head into the overnight hours, we'll start to see those temperatures fall back into the 60s. I think more morning cloud cover and perhaps even a little bit of patchy fog will be possible, especially off to our southeast across the coastal plains. So low temperatures a little bit warmer for places like Floresville, Nixon, Seguin, a little bit cooler across portions of the hill country and north and west of I-35. Low 60s, perhaps even a few upper 50s possible across the hill country by wake up time tomorrow. But for us here in San Antonio, mostly cloudy skies expected first thing tomorrow morning. If you're stepping out for any breakfast plans, church services with the family, upper 60s right near 70 degrees. We'll start to see that morning cloud cover break up, scatter out a little bit more into the afternoon. Very similar to what we saw out there today. 81 degrees around lunchtime. We've got that forecast high pointed right around 90 here in town. So again, another warmer than average afternoon. 
afternoon, not feeling like late October by any means with upper 80s and low 90s, the theme in and around the San Antonio area. So notice though, as we start to see more cloud cover build back in by Tuesday and into Wednesday, we could shave off a few degrees when it comes to those afternoon highs and a few spotty showers certainly possible late next week. You're right, Courtney. I think by this time with how bad the drought is, we've hit 50 consecutive days without measurable rain here in San Antonio. At least it's nice to see a little bit of change when it comes to our weather pattern. Yeah, good to see it in the forecast at all. All right, thanks, Mia. Mary, it was down to the wire for the Spurs. <laughs> Yes, the Spurs win in a nail biter in their home opener against the Rockets. Lobs, tussles, logo threes. We saw it all tonight. We'll have the highlights for you coming up. And week nine of the high school football season wraps up with important games. Also talking college football after the break. Dumping it down to Webby. He falls. Brooks is there. Him and Brooks fighting for it. Watch out. Watch out now. Hold on. Dylan Brooks. Ooh, fuel to the fire. Dylan Brooks and Wemby getting into it in the Spurs home opener in Big Board Sports. The Spurs taking out all of their frustrations from their season opening loss to the Mavericks on the Houston Rockets tonight. First home game of the season. Victor Wembenyama hoists up a shot from the logo. No doubt about that one. Later, Wemby goes to work in the paint and extends for the jam. It's just unfair. All right. The Alamo City's new alter ego is Lob City. Chris Paul connects with Wemby. Victor loving it. Spurs led at halftime. Then Malachi Branham lobs it to Keldon Johnson and KJ punishes the rim. However, this rivalry game called for crunch time. But the Spurs held off Houston, winning 109 to 106. Wemby led the Spurs with 29 points. Jeremy Sohan finished with a double-double. The two rematch on Monday. That'll be a big one. We'll have post game reaction later in the show. It's a get right opportunity for the fifth ranked Texas Longhorns at Vanderbilt, but the 25th ranked Commodores get on the board first. The holding penalty leads to Diego Pavia scrambling and scoring. Quinn Ewers completed his next 17 passes, building a 21 7 lead after this. DeAndre Moore Jr. catch and run up the sideline. Vanderbilt tried to rally, but the Longhorns hang on to win it 27 24. The UTSA Roadrunners looked like they would overcome their road struggles at Tulsa this afternoon up 42-17 in the third quarter as Owen McCown set a program record with 440 passing yards and the defense tied a school record for sacks and tackles for loss. However, Tulsa pieced together four touchdown drives from that point on, ending in a heartbreaker for UTSA 46-45 to Tulsa. Back here in town, D3 ball, the Trinity Tigers hosting Barry Trinity, looking to extend its two game winning streak. But Barry's Brandon Kate had other plans, getting around the corner and rushing in this 26 yard touchdown. Now the Tigers offense struggled to find any rhythm before we had to leave. However, in the end, Trinity victorious in overtime, 38 to 35. All right, TCU rallied from a 17 point deficit to take down Texas Tech. 35 to 34, both are three and two in the Big 12. And in a huge SEC bout, you saw it all unfold right here on KSAT 12. Texas A&M stays undefeated in conference play, downing LSU 38 to 23. UIW defeats Southeastern Louisiana 34 to 31 this evening. And Texas Lutheran improves to six and two with a 28 to six dub over McMurray. At the high school level, there were a trio of games going down on the north side of town. First stop at Hero Stadium, the MacArthur Brahmas hunting their first district win, but that would be easier said than done against the undefeated Piper Warriors. First possession for the Warriors, QB Caden Key throws a screen to Ethan Palmer, who weaves in and out of the MacArthur defense for a 14-yard touchdown. Next time down the field, Keith tricks our cameraman and the defense to find Cash Lancaster wide open 
in the back of the end zone. Piper takes this one 75 to 7. Now to Comalander Stadium, the sixth ring Johnson Jaguars had it made in the shade up 34 nothing on Lee when we got there, but the volunteers wouldn't go down without a fight. Zachary Talamentez looks like he's going to run, but hey, Diego Vertushi is left wide open with plenty of green grass in front of him, taking the rock 60 yards to the house. Johnson would answer on the very next drive. Screen pass from Elvis Estrada to Ethan Day, and he has plenty of blockers leading the way for an 80-yard touchdown as Johnson runs away with it 48 to 28. Well, the Warriors of Warren having a rough day with Sotomayor ahead of Ahead of 28 nothing at halftime at Gustafson Stadium. A fumble by the Warriors gave the Wildcats the ball in great field position, setting up this toss to Cameron Grady, who makes his way down the sideline for the touchdown. Sotomayor earns the victory 41 zip. Also, Brandeis wins a close one over Madison 32 to 30, and Junction hands to Hennis a 54 to three loss. All right, later in the show, we'll have highlights from game two of the World Series between the Dodgers and the Yankees. There are a lot of guys. We had those Ooh, monitors yeah. on. <laughs> there were like amazing game at one after the other. Close games sports. too, yeah. Really good. All right, <laughs> thanks, Mary. Coming up, KSAT explains cookies, the techie kind, on the night blue. Okay, what are cookies? Not the yummy kind, we know what those are, but the tech kind. The kind you get notices about when you log on to certain websites. It'll say this site uses cookies and you can choose what to do from there. So what is a cookie? Here's KSAT Explains. Let's talk cookies. Not this kind, unfortunately. Oh. The kind you find here, online. It's simply a small piece of data. But it can tell a website a lot about you. We don't see them. We don't actually touch them. And we're always being prompted, do you want to accept cookies? Websites use cookies to know who you are by storing information like your username, what you did the last time you logged in, and more. So you go to a website, and the website hands you a cookie. It's just data. It says, User equals Bob. Like a digital name tag? Exactly. Exactly. The cookies a website gives you are stored on your device, your phone, your computer, wherever you're using a web browser. Now, anytime that you come to this website, you're going to hand me that cookie every single time. Your, your browser does it automatically. So that the next time you come back to that website, you'll send that cookie information with your request to the website. And uh, they'll be able to say, oh, okay, I remember this person. Uh, they logged in yesterday. This is maybe some of the stuff that they did or some of their settings. Convenient, right? But it does come with some privacy concerns. Let's say you're shopping online for shoes. You go to a website, you browse around, then you go to a different site like Facebook, for example. And what do you know? There's an ad there for the kind of shoes you were just looking for. That's why it seems like they're following you around because they are and it's cookies that they're using to do that. What you search for online isn't necessarily stored in the cookie itself. That's in the website server. But because the cookie has information about you and can help keep track of you, well, now we can keep track of your habits or the things you've been doing and then that information, that data can be used by the advertising services to better target you towards different ads. It's the sharing and selling of cookies that has raised those privacy concerns and the European Union has done something about it. The United States lags pretty far behind on privacy protections. The EU created what's called GDPR. And that stands for the uh, General Data Protection Regulation. Got it. GDPR policies went into effect in Europe in 2018, touted as the toughest privacy and security law in the world. It lays out a long list of regulations on how personal data can be stored and requires users to give consent, saying they're aware and agreeing to their data being collected. And GDPR applies outside of Europe, so long as those sites can be reached by users in the EU, which is why you see those notifications here in the US, making you aware that sites use cookies. So if that box pops up and I hit accept all cookies, what am I agreeing to? You are accepting that they can track you and generally whatever their privacy policy is. 
So this is where generally most companies explain what they do with your data. So as you hit eBay and you browse around, they're gonna collect information. Oh, you're searching for, I don't know, baby toys, or you know, new baby outfits. Well, they're gonna assume that somebody in the household may be pregnant or may have just had a child. And they're gonna take that information, they're gonna sell it to other people. And so, so you'll start getting ads that are tailored to someone in that position. Exactly. Cookie notifications might give you the option to accept all, deny all, or manage your cookies. If you hit manage cookies, what does that mean? Managing it should allow you to be able to pick and choose uh, which ones you want to allow, where they're allowed to track you, who they're allowed to sell your information. And unfortunately, uh, most sites do a bad job of putting this out there. That prompt should allow you to view the company's privacy policy if you want to do a little light reading. So what if you see that cookie notification and you don't do anything? You just X out of it. According to GDPR, that does not equal consent. But what it does mean can differ from software system to system. So if you want more control, it's best to make your own cookie choices. Look at the web browser you're using and see if there's an extension or an add-on that you could use to manage your cookies. And you can say, I want to find an add-on that lets me manage my cookies where I can look through, sort them, I can delete them, I can clear them, I can just prevent them from ever even um, remaining. If you're worried about your privacy, which you should be, one thing you can even do is uh, disable cookies altogether. That might break some websites, unfortunately, but then you don't have to worry about any of these problems we've talked about. Check out any of our KSAT Explains coverage, scan the QR code, and we take one topic, give you a deeper explanation, and hopefully a deeper understanding. You can watch any KSAT Explains story on demand on KSAT.com or the KSAT YouTube page. Staying with tech, it's something so many of us are guilty of, doom scrolling. What is it? how it affects certain age groups differently, and what doctors are saying you can do to stop the cycle before it starts. The Alebrijes of Mexico have a history as colorful as the art itself. It all began in 1936 with artist Pedro Linares. At the age of 30, he became very ill and began to have hallucinations. In these hallucinations, he would see brightly colored strange animals and kept hearing the word alebrijes. When he woke up, Linares began recreating these mysterious animals out of paper mache, sculpting them to display different body parts from different animals, painting them in vivid colors. No two are exactly alike. These pieces of art grew in popularity and eventually became a staple in the Oaxaca region of Mexico, where many are now made of wood. These pieces can be found year-round and on Dia de los Muertos when they're placed on altars and used as decorations for this special celebration. One more video, one more scroll, one more refresh. It's called doom scrolling, and it's a bad habit that mental health experts say is causing stress, anxiety, and depression in all age groups. Pediatrician Griselda Anguiano says doom scrolling can also cause brain development and social behavioral problems for kids. She wants to remind parents to set boundaries for technology and set time aside to disconnect from electronics. Adults on average spend about two and a half hours a day on social media, but the average teen more than doubles that figure, spending five hours a day on social media. I think we need to make time to to just connect with our kids and not just send them outside, you know, and they're not wanting to go, but go outside with them because it's really good for us too. She says taking a minimum of 10 to 15 minutes to have a face-to-face -face conversation with your kids is starting a starting point to break the cycle of addiction to social media. Try bringing back board games. The doctor says it's a good way to help kids learn how to deal with failure, something social media can't teach them. You know what our neighbors just took out today? Let's hear that it. That my daughter was playing with? Operation. <gasps> 
I loved that Really good day. for dexterity with toddlers, let me tell you. But it was, I hadn't seen that in so long. It was a blast. Talk about a blast from the past. <laughs> exactly. I loved that game growing up. Board games in general, so much fun, okay. I feel like. Maybe we'll have to have a board game night or something Ooh, over here yes. at KSAT. We should do that. That would be a fun time. All right. Well, if you thought October was unseasonably warm, at least we've been talking about these hotter than average temperatures for a while, you are right. In fact, counting in the temperature that we saw out there today. Again, just one degree shy of a record high temperature. 2024's average temperature for the month of October, 78.2 degrees, which is actually in the lead for the hottest October on record here in San Antonio. And again, more hotter than average temperatures expected over the next several days. So I do anticipate us tacking on to that number. We'll continue to keep you posted as we near the end of the month. We talked about again, 90 degrees here in San Antonio this afternoon. Here's a look at highs across the region. Several areas were in the 90s. Gonzales, Pleasanton, Beeville, Carrizo Springs, even Del Rio and Eagle Pass. Parts of the Hill Country still in the mid to upper 80s. More of the same in store over the next couple of days, but then a few spotty rain chances return. We'll have another full look at that forecast coming right up. All right, we were talking about board games, <laughs> favorite board games growing up. Some of ours are similar. They are Monopoly, okay. Shoots and Ladders. Yes. And Candyland. And Candyland. Okay, here's another one. I don't know if this counts, but guess who? Oh with the, the flipping knew, ones? I knew you were going to get yes. excited about this. Oh, yeah, with the flip. Does your person wear glasses? Does your person have, like, blonde hair, whatever? I feel like we should do a case ad edition of this, oh too. My God. That's brilliant. That okay, to we're going to put this together and take way too much time doing it, and then we will share it with you. <laughs> we have to see it through at this point. We We've committed. We should sell it. We could, it'd be fun. <laughs> or KSAT Insiders? Yeah. That'd be fun for our okay, KSAT Insiders. Right. This is, we'll have this, the rest of this discussion later. But <laughs> you were here for this conversation. This idea was born together. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, something that I'm not as excited about is yeah. the number. We've yeah. been talking about this number for days. In fact, 50 days now without measurable rainfall here in San Antonio. The longest stretch since 1996. The record 63 days back in 1993. The last time we saw measurable rainfall in San Antonio was back on September 5th. The rest of September and even October, which by the way, on average, are our second and third wettest months here in the Alamo City, we haven't seen any measurable rainfall. And you can see how that has hurt our drought monitor. This is the latest one, if you missed it, that came out on Thursday. And unfortunately, because of the lack of rain and dry conditions, drought continues to rapidly worsen across South Central Texas. Some of the bigger changes that we saw, extreme drought, which is this pocket of red, it continues to grow and now encompassing the vast majority of Bear County and San Antonio, stretching over to New Braunfels, Hondo, Medina Lake, even up into Bernie uh, and Kendall County. We also have severe drought in place around it, which is this burnt orange color, and then much of the rest of our area still in moderate drought. In fact, it has been over 1,000 days since all of Bear County was last considered to be drought free. Now, it's not going to be drought busting rain, but at least we do have rain chances in the forecast over the next seven days, not over the next 72 hours. Tomorrow, Monday and into Tuesday, still looking to be pretty dry here in South Central Texas. But as we start to see a few changes work back in when it comes to the upper levels of the atmosphere, a 20% chance for an isolated shower or two back in the forecast on Wednesday, and then a 30% potential by Halloween and into Friday. May need to dodge a few showers here and there. Coverage still not expected to be all that high, and anything would likely be pretty light. So here's what's happening. High pressure moving over the state of Texas over the next couple of days, but that's going to continue to push eastward and leave just enough room for a cold front to work in to the state of Texas. The big question here again is how far south is this cold front able to travel before it hits the brakes and stalls across parts of Texas? As of right now, it is still expected to stay north of San Antonio, but it makes it just far south to help us increase those rain chances slightly by Halloween and into Friday. So 
this year, just a 30% chance for a few spotty showers. Keep your plans. Just check back in with us here over the next couple of days. High temperatures in the mid 80s. A big difference compared to where we were last year. We had that cold front move in a few days before Halloween and high temperatures were only in the low 60s. So still warmer than average and dry over the next few days. Nearing records again tomorrow afternoon. At least high temperatures will also start to trend down into Halloween time next week as we start to introduce some more cloud cover in those spotty rain chances. We'll of course continue to keep you posted on your trick or treat forecast over the next several days, Court. All right, thanks, Mia. Well, I think the Spurs were pretty happy with the overall game for sure, Mary. Yeah, and we got to hear from a, a good chunk of the Spurs in the post game press conference this evening. And uh, what that showed was or what they revealed was how much uh, Chris Paul had an impact in tonight's late game crunch. Plus, the Dodgers take a 2-0 series lead in the World Series, talking SAFC also after the break. Victor Wembanyama put up 29 points on Houston tonight. Uh, in the Spurs 109 to 106 home opener win. San Antonio controlled the ball game early going up 22 points on the Rockets. Houston did fight its way back into the ball game, but in the end, the Spurs held on in crunch time by three points. Chris Paul, a big reason for that. No, it helps a lot. Um, even when he's not on the court, he's coaching, he's, you know, helping out, you know, um, just, you know, he's been here. He's been in every moment. So. Just having someone like that and, you know, even Harrison Barnes just to, you know, talk us through uh, different situations helps a lot. When you add uh, a guy like Chris Paul, Harrison Barnes, who've been around for a little while, a long while, um, and they just understand the game a lot more, they're able to put you in certain spots and talk you through certain things um, to space the floor. I feel like what we have going on is pretty, is pretty solid right now. 109 to 106 again the final the rematch goes down Monday at 7 o'clock at Frost Bank Center. Well, game two of the World Series between the Dodgers and Yankees taking shape on the heels of last night's Freddie Freeman walk off Grand Slam first of its kind. Freeman would homer again as the Dodgers hit three early long balls off Carlos Rondon as Los Angeles defeated New York 4-2 to take the 2-0 World Series lead. The big story, though, was superstar slugger Shohei Otani suffering a shoulder injury in the seventh inning on a stolen base attempt. We'll see what the MRI reveals. SAFC season came to a close tonight, falling to Detroit City FC 4-1. No playoffs this year. SAFC defender Carter Manley called it a career after this one, wishing Manley a happy retirement from pro soccer. All right, a wild day of college football. A lot of close games. The Texas Longhorns bounced back from their loss against Georgia, earning their first road win as part of the SEC 27-24 over 25th ranked Vandy, who hadn't lost since upsetting Bama. Meanwhile, UTSA on the losing end of an unlikely rally to AAC foe Tulsa. It was a record day for the Roadrunners going up 42-17 at one point, but it was a tale of two halves. Roadrunners fall 46-45. Man, another heartbreaker. It's tough to see. And Mia's Aggies won. Yay. Yes. We can mention that. <laughs> Good job, Mia. All right. We'll be right back. All right. Let's get you one final look at your Sunday. Upper 60s, near 70 to start. Mostly cloudy skies. And again, a few pockets of patchy fog will be possible, especially across the coastal plains. More afternoon sunshine returning, though, helping high temperatures climb to about 90 degrees here in San Antonio. So not feeling like late October, but we'll start to see those temperatures trend down by the later portions of next week, especially around Halloween. Still not really needing the jacket, but we will monitor for a few spotty showers on Thursday. We'll take it. We need it. We do. Want to play guess who? Always guess who's going to sleep right, right after this because we're tired. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>